Welcome to the bold analysis. I have been doing a disservice to you for failing to comment on or failing to follow the William Ruto strip in Nyanza. But this is because over the weekend I was in Mount Kenya. So I think I came back yesterday and now this Monday I took time and then just followed what exactly was happening there. Two incidences caught my attention and this is the first one. Analysts are asking why is it that during the launch of MV2 uh, shipyard that was being launched in Kisumu, the event that was being presided over by the military, they decided to call William, they decided to snap Brigadier Geshagwa and invited William Ruto to speak straight without following the protocol, the usual, the customary protocol. Sir, I would also like to express our deep gratitude to the National Treasury, the Ministry of Defense, and the Kenya Defense Forces leadership, as well as the dedicated service personnel and the entire Kenya Shipyards Limited team. Together, we worked tirelessly to ensure that MV Uru 2 was delivered on time and within budgets. Your Excellency, sir, it is now my distinct honor to invite you to deliver your keynote address. Thank you once again for gracing with us your presence on this momentous occasion. Now, um, and that has really been leaving us talking about it. Remember, it's happening at a time when there is simmering fallout between Ruto and his deputy. The second incident which I want us to look at is an attempt by William Ruto to introduce or even to let Nyanza rebels to speak while in Bondo. And it backfired. <laughs> Munataka kusikia rikiji, awasalimie. Wapi nduru ya rikiji, awasalimie, aseme jambo. Bado ni njini, mimi ni medali ya njini kofia. Kwa vile mumbe jitokesa, kumuona raisu wetu. Tumefurai sana kufika hapa. Mimi ni kisema... Harambe, Mudase Maruto, Harambe, 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 Nikise Maruto, Mudase Maraiswetu, Ruto, Ruto, Azantani Sala. William Jumeen, Mudase Maukweli. Ebu nione watu wa sub-county hapa nione kwa mkono. Nyinyi wote. Bas mimi nimekubali hiyo maneno. Wacha ni muite mbunge wetu. Mheshimiwa Gideon Ochanda. Hey, 
Hapa tuko na David Ocheng mbunge wa hapa. Hapa tuko na Bol Obor mbunge wa kutoka kule Migori. Hapa tuko na ndugu yangu Elisha Odhiambo mbunge wa game. Hapa tuko na mheshimiwa Gumbo ambaye <coughs> Hapa tuko na Evans Kidero. Asante sana. Hapa tuko na Jalash, huyu mheshimiwa Jalash. Asante sana. Hapa tuko na mheshimiwa Eliud Owalo. Hapa tuko na Deputy Governor ambaye anaitwa William Odwar. Hapa tuko na speaker wetu. Speaker wetu wa County Assembly. Hapa tuko na bwana Ochenda ambaye ni senator wa Kisumu. Huyu kijana. Huyu kijana anaitwa Kimani Ishungwa kutoka Kikuyu. Huyu anaitwa Robi kutoka Kuria. Starting with the regarding Shagwa was heckled and could not speak even for one minute. Then going to Ochenda, the area member of parliament could not and then President Ruto then had just to opt from after realizing that Ochanda, Ochanda could not speak because even the members of the, uh, some people in the crowd started walking away from it, that rally backfired. And Yalango, Ojenda, and Elisha, all of them could not get opportunity to address that rally. That is, those are two observations that I watched. Uh, that I, I saw there and of course it's what I'm going to explain it's the second incident uh, the rebellion that is uh, that rebellion is what I'm going to explain more in this podcast but before we interpret it I would want to know at this point uh, that um, Eludowano in preparation to William Ruto's tour was meeting a caucus known, at, known as Nyanza Professionals. And that is not the first time that has been happening where, whenever William Ruto is going to Nyanza. Where are they? How do they normally, where do they normally come in in the president's tour? People who started following from Saturday, you can tell us, where do that professional caucus come in? Because I'm not seeing them. <laughs> how, do they, how do they normally help William Ruto's tour? in Nyanza. And are these professionals only in Nyanza? Maybe. Number two, despite of a clamor for Ruto rebels to be in the front line in leading William Ruto's tour in Nyanza, it's only the elected leaders that actually took charge. In Homa Bay, I saw Gladys Wanga was in the front line. She did not attend these other she didn't get, these other meetings that were organized by Owalo. In Kisumu, I saw Governor Nyomo. And in Migori, I saw Chilayako. Today in Siaya, I saw my Governor Orengo taking charge. And of course, there is something that I know. Orengo must realize that Nicholas Oguero Odero Gumbo is not a lightweight. If you follow the Kisumu, they are at the bond one, you realize, okay, Gumbo comes from that area though. But Gumbo is not a lightweight. Of all those rebels, I think Gumbo is going to give uh, Orengo a very tough uh, space ahead. Um, people, we've just been told, um, there's a photo that I've been told that the guy was frowning throughout during the Kisumu event, the Kisumu one. Even though he was not part of William Ruto's tour there, he only went to Kisumu to attend the cabinet meeting. And maybe, of course, for some reasons, he had to still hang around the president as the president was still there in Kisumu. So, ladies and gentlemen, from that outright rejection that you can see, and there is not even the only one. I, I saw somewhere in Migori, there were a group of youths. I think I have that video here. Maria, 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 Maria,
Those youths were actually undressing those who were putting UDA merchandise along the road. Okay, this tour, this Nyanza tour, I will not want to get into the details about what William Ruth was doing. I think that I had already analyzed and I told you people that 80% of what was being launched was Uhuru Kenyatta projects. The only one, one project that has been launched that is new is the Home of Pair. Pair. Is it Pier or Pair? That's the only one. But MV2, the events, the who was launching in Sierra, those were projects that had already been initiated by former President Uhuru Kenyatta. And we agreed there is a plus, absolutely no problem with that. And so, William Ruto went to Nyanza for a political mission. Because he went at a time when bipartisan talks are retreating and there is some very, there is some calmness, you know. He also went at a time when there is a discussion about Raila succession politics there that had been initiated. And of course, he also went there at a time there is a fallout between him and the Gede I'm yet to con I'm yet to look at it with it, but but looking at the things, uh, there is a problem somewhere. So he went there, uh, maybe knowing that if there is a fallout between him and the Gandhi, it would excite the Nyanza leaders. But one thing I want to say, and I'm so grateful about, is the fact that William Ruto was welcomed there. We have seen political shenanigans when when the president goes to that place, then some few characters start planning some heckling matches so that the community can be profiled negatively. But look at the reception, look at the crowd in Homer Bay. There is absolutely nothing wrong, even though we understand there was, there was a lot of mobilization. And William Ruto went also to Nyanza for UDA visibility. In Homer Bay, they opened a UDA office. Yes, and the UDA team were actually tagging along the president there. But William Ruto, this is the gospel truth that even the people around you or even the military may not tell you. The gospel truth about Nyanza is this. The Mount Kenya script of staging a coup against Raila Odinga is impossible. Truth be told. All these fellows, the Ojendas, the Elisha, the Ochanda, all these fellows they, they anchored, they started their political career. They anchored their political career from UDA leader. You know, and that is the problem. You know, if you started as an independent candidate somewhere and then you build your profile and... But all these profiles have been built around Ray Lodinga. And Ray Lodinga has been in this politics for quite so long. You cannot compare that with some... Madera member of parliament, Rigeti Geshagwa, also launched his political career under Huru Kenyatta's shadow. But that was in 2010, so only 10 years. But then Nyanza, those politicians, they initiated it around Raila. And Raila existed at the state. So if there was a political script of using the juvenile leaders as the ones to make your way, it can't work. And I think someone should tell me, William Ruto, you're the president. You can as well go and talk to the people of Nyanza yourself without Raila antagonism politics and even maximize on the votes he's sorting is looking for in that region. He went there for politics because he was even telling them that there is a debt that is supposed to be settled in 2007 and Raila is supposed to back him. And we saw uh, Kalonzo saying, you know what, I deserve the backing, I deserve Raila Odinga's backing more than any other person. Number two, party visibility is good because it will make UDA be famous. But popularity of government is what can make people to vote for the government. And so party visibility with zero development, with over taxation, I don't think is going to bring traction. The roads, yes, you're launching, you're commissioning roads. You're commissioning 
huge military linked projects like that one in Mukisumu. You're commissioning some infrastructure. But if people cannot feel reprieve, if they cannot be they if we, people cannot have the full good effect, feel good effect in the economy, that work cannot be seen. Lastly. And this is the truth. With regard to Geshagwa as the deputy, the Nyanza vote cannot improve. As much as you go, even if you will take one week in Nyanza, but if Regadi still remains Ruto's deputy, I don't think. Why? I think Regadi has talked too ill about the other side. He is gone extremist. And the messages are bringing anger. So if still with Regadi, I'm telling you, the antagonism will continue and I don't think the Nyanza vote will even improve. Unless something different happens. Thank you.